we're in an expanding economy, the social security scheme is going broke. That is absolutely a unusual feature, if not a record. And the reason for that is not so much because of rates and some of these things that I've heard um, spoken of so passionately this afternoon. It is rather because of some issues that they actually, perhaps he was being diplomatic, maybe a little bit careful, maybe a bit fearful, did not touch on as he really ought to have done. The problems facing this national insurance scheme, the tragedy of it, is the completely disgraceful governance that this scheme has been subjected to over more than one decade. Let us face it, the sixth and seventh actuarial reviews have been on the desk of the directors of this national insurance scheme and they have done nothing about it. We are expecting them to do something this time. We must be living in dreamland. Until we fix this question of governance, and I'm not only talking about the national insurance scheme, that is true of any organization, any institution, private sector, public sector, NGO, whatever. If you don't have capable, competent governance and governors, you will always end up in disaster, no matter how much your economy is growing. So we have to fix that. It is very unfortunate, a consultation like this, the persons who are in the investment committee have chosen not to be here this afternoon. Mr. So Morris Solomon, one of the very long-standing directors, who I believe has a serious conflict of interest with one of your major investments, he's not here this afternoon either. But it is not only the board, the cabinet, the political parties, the trade union movement, the private sector, they have all sat back and done nothing as this national insurance scheme has veered towards disaster. I have read and I have written, and it's a measure of how our country operates. People call me and ask me, Chris, what do you think about the actual review? I said, check business pay three weeks ago. Oh, you know, I didn't get papers that day, or I didn't read it, or I didn't have time to, boy, you know, got so much work to do. That is the kind of people, and those are the people who are leading us into this disastrous situation. Now, there is no easy solution, Madam Chair. Absolutely no easy solution. Having neglected to do what you're supposed to have done for over 10 years, it's not going to get better. And then having pumped $5.7 billion into Clico, and it is a very unfortunate omission by our actuary that he failed to even mention that particular. Now, I would have expected him to say, this write-off or this non-performing, non-interest earning, call it what you will, 20% of the asset base of this institution, we get nothing from it. We've got nothing from it for three years. What impact has that had on this scheme? And who is going to be held responsible? Yet we have a board, Madam Chairperson, and I would ask that you look at the financial statements, where the chairman of the board, Dr. Roger Longen, said, oh, the president said we, our money is safe. He said that three years ago. Where is the money? And surely, the board must have the spine to ask its chairman and ask the government, where is this? If they can't function, they should resign. That's right. So we have a serious problem of governance. We have a serious problem of investment. We have a serious problem where one of our directors is involved in a major conflict situation. We also have an administrative problem. Like 
Mr. John, I sympathize with the entire staff of the National Insurance Scheme. I myself have been involved in National Insurance for, for donkey years. But I believe they need to do much, much more. I was looking at um, the operations of a certain employer, a certain company. The most expensive person in that institution, he's not paying NIS and PAY. Now, it suggests to me, not that the staff are careless, but maybe they're not well enough trained. There are some things you ask straight away. Let me see your senior staff payroll. Don't go for the little junior assistant. Look at the big numbers. Now, and when I mention administration, I also am mentioning how you pursue employers. A couple of weeks ago, I was at the Braden Hope Magistrates Court, and I saw the NIS being made to look stupid in the court by a lawyer who probably ducks his own NIS. I called the management of the National Insurance Team. I said, look, I am prepared to assist the National Insurance Scheme pro bono in legal matters. I am still waiting for that offer to be taken up. So I've, I've identified, and I'm sorry I'm taking a little longer than I, I would have liked, governance, management. We also have to look at leakages. As it's been said, the, the NIS can't be isolated from the rest of this country. If there's corruption everywhere, there, there must be corruption here. There must be a lot of leakages. The, as, as someone said, with all the number of people who migrate, who don't claim out of the scheme, how come we gone broke? Something is seriously wrong. And my, my suggestion is that before we go and look at some of those issues about raising pension, and I'm going to address that in a moment, let us address these fundamental issues. Because unless you address them, you will not, you will find yourself back in the same position, maybe not a year. I'm already in receipt of a pension, so don't have to worry. Many, many years. Now, the actuary said, NIS data and national statistics not provided, some of it not provided, not complete, or not available. Yet he went on to make some of the most sweeping recommendations you could find that have ever been made in this, the history of this national insurance game. That can't be right. Now let me touch on one. He is saying, let us go to increase the pension age to 65. The Bureau of Statistics website and the latest information they have on life expectancy. Guess what it is? <laughs> it is 63. <laughs> so here is, and for the numbers, in 2004 life expectancy was, for male was 63.36, and for female 68.96. Now, if you look, if you look, and I, I know a little bit about it, I, I play around with numbers as for my living. If you look, at the, the beneficiaries, free time male to female, roughly free time. So what do we have? You have a person contributing almost all their life. Moreover, that's 63.36. It's the overall average. The sugar worker, the construction worker, the poor person who has not had the benefit of good health, good diet, good exercise is likely to have passed on much earlier than the others. Uh, did this actually take account of the sociological factors and the real consequences of what he was saying? Madam, I would like to think he did not. Because if this actually had done so, he would not have said the minimum old age pension of 50% of minimum wage in the public service. 
which I worked out from the 2012 estimates, 17,932, provides a very adequate level of protection for the elderly. $17,000 provides a very adequate level of protection for the elderly. It, is this gentleman for real? Does he know what he was saying? Does he understand? And that brings me to a position that I have recommended several years ago. This national insurance scheme is what, 43 years? It doesn't, it can't afford its own actuary. 43 years and you don't have an actuary. So somebody comes in every five years. We have recommended, I, in various capacities and wearing various hats, I've recommended that it should go to three years. And Mr. Martin Baru will tell you that the Caribbean heads of NIS, I, NISs, have recommended we should have gone three years. We are doing it five years and we don't have anybody here. He comes, he looks, he goes. And leaves us to do the rest.